right, I'm gonna, I'm in another basement here doing some more work. I'm just gonna, somebody asked me one time, when I do my butt joints and I box them, do I cross it off here? Do I run past the seam? Do I stay back from the angle? Uh, when I run my, my 10 box and cross it off, how do I do that? So I'm gonna show that in this video here. I do pre-fill all my seams and all my butt joints. You've heard me talk about it all the time. In this particular basement, I did it with um, lightweight 90 setting compound because I had a lot to do here and I had a lot Lot of corner bead to put on. Took me three hours, guys, just putting the corner bead on the um, the tape on corner bead. And you know what I use, right? Super wide sheetrock tape on corner bead, and I put it throughout. This took me over a case to do this. Some ten footers, some eight footers. It was just a lot of corner bead. But when I pre-fill too, I don't just fill in the gap sometimes. If you see this mud right here, that is, that is Durabond or that is lightweight 90, um, that is lightweight 90 setting compound all the way here. I have nothing on this side because this, this butt joint was so far off, I pretty much had to coat this side and then I taped it here, but I had to fill this in because it was it was off. I mean, it was off quite a bit. Let me throw that in the It was off quite a bit. So I do a lot of floating on my seams if I think they're very uneven and, and they're not straight and you can't just make it straight and you have to float it in. Sometimes I'll float it in with the Durabond before I even tape it. It makes it so much easier. I will still finish this in two coats. I will put two more coats on this and it'll be ready to sand. All of this stuff, corner bead. I've only got one coat on this corner bead. I've got one coat on these screws. I have, I'll coat this out today and I'm gonna show you how I cross off my butt joints and how I do that and I will coat this out today. And then when it's dry, I will come back and skim it. And when that's dry, I will come back and sand it and detail it. And then it's ready for paint. So I, I, I know a lot of you just think I'm just staging all of this stuff up and I'm not showing you any mistakes or anything else. But, but right here, I, I don't do that, honestly. What you see is what I'm doing. I don't stage really anything. I just work like I'm working and just show you what I do. So here, as I was getting set, up to show you me boxing this. I saw a bad spot here on the wall and I've had three of them in here. This was one, I had one right over here and I had one on the other wall over there, but I, those two I spotted when I was pre-filling and I fixed them. This one here I didn't spot until just now and I, and I heard it because it had a, a hollow point. So I have to fix this first. Before I, can, before I can box this, I have to fix it. And I have some fiber fuse, some super strong fiber fuse over there. So I'm gonna put this in here first before I, I box this. But I'm, then I'm gonna show you how I box this wall, how I cross off these butt joints, and what I do with these angles, and what I do with all of this stuff, all right? So um, here I go. I know you can still hear me, even though I'm way over here. And I just want to tell you, I seen a lot of guys as they were boxing the seams and they were doing all of this stuff. They also, they just go ahead and they wipe it all down. I mean, they come back with a knife and they just wipe it all out. I don't do that. I, I had some tapers who did do that, but I don't. And I'll, and I'll tell you why I don't. It's because, it takes time to do that. And I, that's time is not something that I'm, I really have a lot of because I work alone. So if I can save myself steps of doing stuff, by all means, I'm gonna save myself steps of doing stuff. So I make sure my mud is mixed right. I make sure it's pre-filled properly. Again, like I said, if, if the, uh, if the seams are a little off, I float them out a little bit. Um, but the most important thing is the mud. Obviously, if the mud is too thin, 
and this is too deep, it's just going to sag and fall down the walls. If it's too thick, I'm going to be pushing my brains out. And with all my drinking in my life, I don't have very many brains left. Um, so if it's too thick, I'm going to be working way too hard. But if I have the mud just right, it just box is so nice and it keeps it so clean this is ready for a 12 box guys i don't have to do anything with this it's ready to 12 box it's ready to skim one skim coat and it's done so let me show you how i cross these off all right so now what I will do is I will look at the seam, and if there are any heavy edges here, and there were, I had some heavy edges back here, and what I did, because I know my, my 10 box blades are getting bad right now, so what I did was that little bitty screw right there on the two sides, I just took my six inch knife and gave it a quarter turn, and the edges are gone. All of the edges are gone. But let's say I have a little bit of an edge. I cut it off. I don't have to mud it in. I just remove it. This is beautiful, guys. Just beautiful. Ready. Don't be a mechanical taper. Just, just look at the job, look at what you're doing, and just take it from there. Now, obviously, had I let this stuff set and, and come back the next day to cross it off after it was dry, I would do this much differently. I would have just mudded it up and wiped it out. But since it's all wet, I have to coat it in. And, and all it really is, all I'm really doing is using the, the 10 box to get my mud up there quicker. That's really all I'm doing. If, uh, if I wanted to get my mud up there slower, I just started running it all by hand, but I would never get out of here. I got, got too much to do in here. Uh, no offense, hand taper, guys. I, I love your work. I think you guys are phenomenal. Uh, it's just, I've been learning on tools and been running tools since 1976. So I'm a tool guy. I run tools. That's what I do. And uh, I, I, that's exactly what I do. If you remember one of the, one of my last YouTube videos, uh, it was doing butt joints by hand, and I did mud them up by hand. Now, remember, this one I told you, it was really off. I mean, it was really off, and I filled in the one side with, with Durban, so I really don't need much mud at all right here. But I do need quite a bit of mud on this side. So this time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mud this one up pretty well. But you see how I'm fixing this angle? How I got my mud right in here in this angle too? And I, I'm going to pull this out, pull this out. But uh, it looks like I'm gonna get a scratch here too. Not too bad, that wasn't bad, all right? So if I wipe this out one more time, I want this to be heavy here because I've got light coming down here and if this is not heavy, you're gonna see this big time. But right now, I will dust this off and I will skim it and it'll be perfect. I'll turn the camera down a little bit. Like this. So you can watch me do this. And if you remember, I put a little piece of tape there. I hope I have enough mud. We'll see. But I'll just come right up the middle like this. And then sometimes I will do this like that. Get my mud on there, right? Lay it flat. Wipe it out. Wipe it out. Wipe it out. And we are, oh, mud in the nose. And there we go walk away, let it dry. You guys, have a good day. Hey, if you really like my videos, subscribe. And if you really, really like them, please just share them with somebody else. How do you like my new t-shirts? And you know, you also might want to check out these other videos that are playing right down here right now. So uh, just click on them.
All right, subscribe. Have a great day.